In this fourth session on Ephesians 2, 4-7, we're going to focus on the greatness of God's love for us in making us alive. But God, being rich in mercy, and then he adds to rich mercy, great love, because of the great love, and so this because here is linking up with made us alive. Because of this, this happens. Because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. So, God, because of great love, made us alive. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him. So, not just made alive, but raised us up with him. That's also flowing from the greatness of this love. And seated us with him. It's also flowing from that love. In the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that, and the purpose of being made alive and raised and seated, is so that, In the coming ages, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us. And that, too, is flowing from that great love because it's the purpose of these three which are the effect of that love. Father, as we try to understand the greatness of this love and how it's related to this particular glorious effect and the results of it, O oh God, grant that we would not only perceive the peculiar, precious, special, life-giving nature of this love, but that we would feel it, that we would rest in it, live in it, be transformed by it, treat other people with a similar kind of welcoming love. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. It's one thing to say the love of God. That's magnificent, right? If there is a God, and if he is the creator of the universe, and if he is powerful enough to sustain all the galaxies, and he has love, it's remarkable. And then to call it great love is to up the ante even more. Now, here's a concern that I have. In the tradition, at least, that I grew up in, John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That verse is laid on all other verses in such a way that it controls the interpretation of all the other verses with a particular understanding, namely, God loves the world, meaning everybody the same. When it says here, God loved the world, so loved the world, how is is it that he so loved the world? He so loved the world that he gave his only son with this effect. And this design that whoever believes should not perish but have eternal life. That's absolutely right and true. It's Bible. It's it's the words of Jesus. God loved the world in such a way that he sent Jesus Christ. And the effect and the design of that love is anyone who believes. We can preach this to absolutely anybody on the planet. Anybody who believes will never perish but have eternal life because of that love. That's true. But I, as a child anyway, and I think millions of people, interpret this to mean this is what the love of God is. It is a disposition of God toward everybody in the same way that they may believe. It's an opportunity. It's an offer. And indeed it is, but that's not all it is. That's what I want us to see here. 
That won't work. Limiting the love of God in this text to that simply will not work. Why is that? Because the effect of this love, because of the great love with which he loved us, he made us alive. He did not, he did not just offer life. Eternal life. He didn't just offer it, not just offer it. He made it. Because of this love, he made us alive. So, this great love applies especially to us. And who's the us? The us who are going to be made alive. And what's the effect of this great, great love? To make us alive. But not all are made alive. Otherwise, all would be alive and saved. All are not saved. All are not made alive. Many are still dead in their trespasses and sins. Therefore, we can see that this love, the greatness of this love, is a love peculiarly at work in God's elect. This is the us of 1, 4, and 5, and right on through the chapter. He chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world. He predestined us for adoption as sons for himself, and and in accord with that election and predestination, he has now, by this great love, made us alive. And so I'm arguing God doesn't love everybody in the same way. He has a love that he offers the entire world in John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave his son. And the design of that love is that anyone who believes will not perish but have eternal life. And that is absolutely true. And we head into the world with that message and say, believe, believe, and you will be saved. You will not perish. But here we learn that those who do believe are enabled to believe by the life they are given by this great love. He made us alive. Now, I know some theologians say that God made everybody alive. Sometimes it's called prevenient. Prevenient. You can't read that, can you? Let me try it again. Prevenient. Prevenient grace. Meaning, yes, we're all dead in trespasses. Then God by prevenient grace, grace that comes before, makes everybody alive. A partial regeneration, I've heard it called. And then we are left partially quickened to use our self-determining free will to decide finally whether we will be saved or not. That absolutely will not work in this text. That's a theological construct brought to the Bible, not one learned from the Bible. We know it for this reason. This great love has this effect. Because of this great love, he made us alive and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places. He did not make us halfway alive because of this love and then wait to see what we would do with our vaunted self-determination. He didn't. The same great love that made us alive raised us up and seated us. This is a totality of salvation here, not a partial regeneration. So, it is absolutely glorious that we see this. So many Christians live with the sense that they are only loved with the same love that people have who reject the love and go to hell. So God loves us as his children 
with the same love that he loves those who stiff-arm him and blackball him and commit treason against him and do not repent and wind up in hell. That's not what this text is teaching. This text is teaching Ephesians 5.25, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Christ has a bride. The bride was elect from the foundation of the world. She was given grace in eternity, according to 2 Timothy 1, 9. She has been loved with great love from all eternity, and that love moved him to die, give himself peculiarly for her with a new covenant renovating love. Here's Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as loved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering to God. Romans 1, 7. To those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints. 1 Thessalonians 1, 4. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you. That's a peculiar love. 2 Thessalonians 2.13, but we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, loved by the Lord, because God chose you. This is a peculiar love here as the first fruits to be saved. 1 John 3, 1, see what love the Father has given to us, that we should be called the children of God, and so we are. We are the children of God because of this love. He made us the children of God by raising us from the dead. John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this, than that he laid down his life for his friends. Not that he doesn't lay down his life for others. He does, but not in the same way. There is a peculiar life-giving love so that it can be said, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of the world, having loved his own, who were in the world, he loved them to the end. It is a wonderful thing to be able to offer to the world, John 3, 16, and say, whosoever believes will not perish but have eternal life because God loved the world and gave his son. And it is even more precious personally that when you have believed, you look back and say, I didn't do that. I didn't make myself believe. I was made alive. Why was I made alive? Because of this great love that distinguished me and owing to nothing in myself. I did not merit it at all. It was absolutely free. So don't miss the preciousness of the great love of God for you peculiarly in making you alive from the dead.